If you think the college application process couldn't be more stressful, think again. A growing number of schools now include a background check, making sure that everything on a student's application is accurate. It's just one more thing for students to think about. You can never get in with like a 620 and 660. That's like yeah, <laughs> so right. unrealistic. It's ridiculous. It's really Byram ridiculous. Hills High School juniors Emily Shulman and Pete Skirman are confident they're getting into college next year. Yet even with good grades and test scores, they worry about the application process. One part of the application that makes me nervous is just the essays because so much pressure is put on the essay. Every time I take a test, like an AP test or the SAT, like, I'm definitely thinking about how that's going to look on my application. But student applications that look too good have raised a red flag. More and more university programs are validating application information. In a high-pressure environment, students then seek for some hook, some way to make themselves stand out. Michael Josephson is president and founder of the Josephson Institute of Ethics in California. When people want something badly enough, there's a certain category and percentage who are willing to lie to get it. To confirm submitted information, the Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley verifies each student's application and conducts a background check. Peter Johnson is executive director of admissions for the full-time MBA program. In that first year, there were probably about 10 people that would have received an offer of admission had they not misrepresented themselves. What colleges are looking for and what they've told us time and time again is they want authenticity. They want to hear the student in his or her own voice. They want to know that student's story. So let's talk. Which ones? And here to tell us more about the application process is Barry Melton Norman, a private college admissions advisor and director of My College Counselor Consulting Group here in New York. Good morning. Good morning. One of the reasons we did this segment is because there's a real per pervasive sort of culture of cheating out among school kids. We saw it at the Air Force Academy recently, a couple of different places, a business school. A lot of kids have been busted out. We see that college kids trying to get into college will cheat. Do kids know that these colleges are going to start checking this way? You know, they really generally don't. Um, even for the UC system, the University of California system, um, it's a very small couple of lines in their application buried in the instructions. Mm -hmm. So even the kids applying there don't necessarily know. Yeah. And they're not necessarily notified. Right. Um, it's not they they're not being asked, did you do this or did you do that mm. sometimes. Sometimes they're going directly to the counselor. Okay, you were in this business. You used to look at these applications at Barnard College. If you found out somebody was cheating on an application, what would you do with the application? I mean, you're pretty much done, in my opinion. Um, there are so many competitive applicants. I don't need a student who's, you know, basically made a mockery of the process, a proven liar. Um, you know, I'd rather take a student with a little lower scores who has a better story and I, who I know is, is yeah. who she says. It's so obvious. I mean, it, 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 we should, it goes without saying that these kids shouldn't cheat, but there are a couple of flags that will help admissions officers know that there's something wrong, and we're going to put them on the screen. Okay. No corroborating information, inflated hours of commitment, that would be to your public service work or whatever it is, conflicting information. Is how, without beating this dead horse, mm -hmm. tell these kids they can't cheat on these things. Well, it's just not worth it. Um, if you get caught, it's a deal breaker pretty much. So why risk it? Yeah. Um, you know, it's not about being perfect. Even in the places that we consider the most competitive, not everybody is equally brilliant across the board. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have a weakness. Um, deal with it head on. Right. Talk about it if there's a weakness in the transcript or in the extracurricular background because something came up. Um, you know, I'll give an example of a student from this admission cycle of mine who had a D in AP US history, a course that is a huge course to colleges. Right. Um, I advised her to address it head on, discuss what happened, point out that it's an anomaly, and basically she ended up with an $80,000 merit scholarship at a highly selective university. I should remember, I'm going to pass that <laughs> advice on to somebody else I know with one bad grade and a transcript. <laughs> it, here's that we have 30 seconds left. Okay. For kids who are in this process, how do they stand out in this sea of brilliant kids who are trying to get into these colleges? It's actually very simple. Be honest. Don't try to be someone you're not. Mm. Um, basically, uh, what you see, and I, this is from when I worked in admissions, right. um, students aren't honest, and that's the big problem. All right. Good. Thanks so much. Do My appreciate pleasure. it. We'll be right back.